In this video I'm going to walk quickly through um, making a, a really basic map in Data Wrapper, the data visualization tools. Um, this is Data Wrapper here, the address is datawrapper.de um, and the data I'm using comes from the uh, data.police.uk website under the data downloads uh, tab, the data tab and I've just gone to West Midlands Police and in this case I've downloaded crime data. I want to make a map of where bike thefts have happened in Birmingham. Now a couple of key points before you actually make the map, some of the preparation can really save you a lot of time later on. One of the key points uh, when you're preparing data for a map is to just strip back the data to the columns that you need. So in this case, this is the original data that you get from uh, data.police.uk. We've got columns for an ID code for the month, um, the force that reported this, uh, the force the that it falls within and so on. Now, we don't need a lot of this data for the map. We don't need the crime ID code. That's not going to be relevant to our map. The month is always the same. These two columns are always the same. Um, and we're looking at just one crime type as well, so we've filtered it down to bike theft. And this is the actual data that I've um, ended up with for the map. So I've removed all the columns apart from really the ones that are going to be useful for our map. The two most important are longitude and latitude. If we don't have those two columns, it's going to be very difficult to make a map. And those are at the front of the, of the table as well, so they're going to be easy to find. And then we've got the other uh, columns as well. So we've only got about six columns here. That's going to make it a lot easier to map. So always strip back your data to um, only the data that you need for the map. And in fact, I could probably have stripped that back even further. The second tip in terms of preparation is to make sure your latitude and longitude columns, lat and long, are easy to find so they're clearly labelled and hopefully towards the front of your data. Now um, before I get into the mapping it's worth pointing out that there is a handout if you're doing this as part of a course um, which goes through this in a bit more detail so it's useful to have that to hand and obviously there's a lot of tutorials online for data wrapper as well. But here we are on data wrapper. Um, the first thing to do is to click on start creating. You don't even need to sign up but it is worth signing up because at the end you're going to need to sign up to publish it. So make sure you're signed in if you do have an account. Click on create new again and one of the options here is to create a new map. So that's what we want to do. Click on create new and select map. There are three types of map, <coughs> excuse me, uh, three types of map on Data Wrapper. Um, and the one that we're interested in is called a symbol map. You might sometimes see it called a points map. So this is where each data point is represented by a symbol or a point. Um, that's different to a choropleth map, which is where you have shapes for each region or country. What we're doing here is a simple symbol map. So click on symbol map and the first thing it's asking you to do is to check, uh, is to create sort of select your map that you want to use essentially as the base of your map. So if, if you were looking at lots of different countries you would probably want the entire world as your base map. If you were just looking at countries in a particular continent then you might pick that. If it was a particular country then you might pick that. In our case we're looking at a particular region so we could have United Kingdom but we've got crimes within the West Midlands, within West Midlands Police. So I'm going to type in West Midlands here. There are a lot of base maps on Data Wrapper so it's the quickest way to find the one that you're interested in is to search for it. And there are two that um, are specifically the West Midlands. Uh, this one which is LSOA and this one which is MSOA. Now if you really want to know what they stand for, they stand for lower super output area and um, middle or medium super output area. Um, 
it's not important to know what they are, but they are basically small uh, divisions of the region. Uh, MSOA is um, not as small as LSOA. So I would pick MSOA. It just means you'll get lines on this map for all of those little um, areas. That's not going to be relevant to your map anyway, but this is the best that you can get from Data Wrapper unless you create this shape yourself. So click Proceed. And the next point is to add your data, to import your data. Um, you can actually do this manually, but most of the time you're not going to want to do that. You're going to have some data that you want to put on this map. So click on Import Your Data Set and you'll be given two choices here. Your first choice is whether your data has addresses in it or place names. The second choice is if your data has latitudes and longitudes in it. Um, that's always the better case. So if you have data with latitudes and longitudes, that's always better than addresses. Um, if you have addresses, then the software data app is going to have to guess where those addresses are. It's going to convert them to latitudes and longitudes. So our data does have lat long in it. So if you click latitudes, longitudes, you can then import your data set. There's an option here to click and upload a CSV file. You can also copy and paste from your data directly into this table here. But I'm going to click and I'm going to import the data that I've downloaded and filtered. It's important to emphasize that I've saved this as a CSV file. So in Excel uh, and in Google Sheets, when you uh, uh, go to File Save As or File Download As, you can specify CSV rather than an Excel spreadsheet or an Excel workbook. So CSV is the file format I've used. Let's open that. Once you open the data, it will then ask you to select the column in your data that contains latitude. And obviously that's this one. So above that column, I want to click on the match as latitude option for that column. And that just specifies that this is the column with latitude in it. Now you have to kind of scroll down to see the next button here. So just click on that to go to the next question, which is selecting the column that contains longitude. And again, it's the same process. We just need to find the column that has our longitude in it. And above that column, click on the uh, box that says match as longitude. Again, scroll down to find the next button and click it. You're now done, you can click go. And you should start to see your data appear on the map, the points from your data. Now, one thing that you will notice with this particular example with West Midlands Police is that West Midlands Police actually covers a different area to the West Midlands um, area that's in Data Wrapper. So it's a good example of uh, two organisations or, or two areas that have the same name but actually have a different footprint. They cover a different area. So, but this is the best we can do on Data Wrapper. Unfortunately, there are no areas on Data Wrapper, no maps on Data Wrapper that are smaller than this West Midlands area and it doesn't have um, police areas built in. So, um, it will just give you an opportunity to check this and then you can click proceed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now we get some options to um, visualize this map so we get some options to kind of tweak the way that this map looks and uh, the first option is the shape and size of the symbol by default it's going to pick circles and it's going to be 10 pixels uh, in size we could make that massively bigger you can see the result there we can make it smaller you can see the result there so just tweak that and, and get to a size that you're happy with um, maybe go down to five here. We could, if uh, it, we could size this marker by one of the columns, if we had a numerical column. So if it was the number of crimes at each location, we might size our points based on that value. But we don't have 
um, a column in our data which has a number in it apart from latitude and longitude and we do not want to size our points by either of those because that's not really measuring anything in terms of a quantity of events. There is an option <coughs> to group nearby symbols. I'll, I'll tick that so you can see what happens there. Um, what this will do is create a kind of a, a mega circle to indicate that there are a number of circles within that. So um, that's quite good if you're zooming out and then people can zoom in and it will redraw itself. So I'm going to leave that for a moment um, before we move on to zooming so you can see the effect. But you can turn that off if you just want to allow people to explore the map in terms of points. Um, and again, there are some options here. I'm not going to go into those, but um, you can customise those as well. Then we've got the uh, symbol colours. Um, in other words, if we wanted to colour these symbols by some sort of column, if we had a column for crime category, for example, we could use that here, um, but we've just selected bike theft, so all of these crimes are the same category, so we're not going to colour them differently. Um, but we can choose a different base colour, so instead of blue, we could go for red, we could go for orange, uh, we could go for a, a black as well. So I'm going to I'm going to pick this. Uh, I'm going to pick this green actually. Now, a really important option right at the bottom is whether we want to make the map zoomable or not. By default, this is turned off, but we definitely want to turn that on because actually um, most of what we're interested in needs to be zoomed into anyway. And once we turn that button on, you'll notice uh, a zoom will appear in the bottom right corner. So now we can zoom into this map and we can fiddle around with it a bit more. So we might at this point go back to grouping nearby symbols. And this is where zooming in, you'll notice these, this grouping changes. So it's only grouping um, based on the, the zoom. We've got some other options at the bottom here. So where the button is, the zoom button, we might put it somewhere else. Um, we've got things to do with the map overall. But once you're happy with all of this, you can click proceed. And this will take you to the next tab under visualize, which is the annotate tab. So this is where we can write the title of the chart, the description, the data source and other pieces of information. With a, a map and with visualization generally, try to avoid just writing a label. So, you know, we could say, you know, map of um, bike thefts in the West Midlands. OK, that's all right. But it's that's what you would get in a report, in a, in a kind of an academic report or an internal report. Actually, um, because this is a piece of journalism, we want to tell a story. So we want to say something like, you know, here are were. Uh, bikes were stolen in September, which is when the date the data refers to. Um, so that's one option. That's going to invite people to interact with the map rather than just label it. Another thing we could say is uh, find out where bike thefts took place near you. Um, because we're inviting the audience to explore it. It's an exploratory piece of visualization. And that's an important distinction to make here. This isn't a, a map that particularly tells a story. If we saw particular clusters, we might have a different headline. We might say something like, um, there are clusters of bike thefts in the, um, in the west and east of the West Midlands. So that might be a different type of title headline if uh, we were telling a story with our chart about a pattern. But let's just keep it exploratory. So um,
okay? Now the description box here is going to create text underneath the headline and this is where you can provide some extra context, some extra detail. Um, you can um, invite the user to, to do something in particular. Um, in this case we, we could say um, we could say something about you know the overall total of bike thefts for example so I'm just gonna check my data and see what the total was. I think there are I'm just gonna move this around so you can see the bottom. Um, so there are 262 bike thefts. Don't forget there's a header row at the top. So 263 rows means 262 events. So there were 262 bike thefts in September. Um, and we might add some detail about whether that's gone up or gone down since the same time last year. Um, so this is down 10% from the same period last year. Um, now we often compare year on year rather than month on month because you can get seasonal variation between months if you think about December, Christmas, lots of shopping. Um, also uh, quite often more cr particular types of crime. So um, we wouldn't want to compare December with November for example, we would want to compare December with the previous December, and likewise, it's always better to compare a September to a previous September and so on. The notes box is for anything we want to appear at the bottom of the table. Um, so we, we might make it any anything clear about what's not measured here. So um, for example, this, this data only uh, records reported crime um, some bike thefts will not have been reported to the police. That's quite important to emphasize. Who published this, the data? Uh, this is data.police.uk and link to the data, well, we can copy this link here where we got the data from. The byline, that can be your name or the publication, uh, or both. So in this case, I can put Paul Bradshaw on the side. And uh, we have a box for an alternative description of this map for screen readers. Um, so screen readers are going to be used by people who are blind or who are partially sighted, and it will read out this description um, when it gets to this image, to this map. So it's an alternative way of describing it for people who are blind or partially sighted. And um, normally you want to kind of give a, a, a story about the, the visualization. You want to describe what it's showing rather than just list the data. In, in a, a case like this with an exploratory map, that's quite difficult because it isn't telling a clear story. It isn't kind of like one bar is the biggest. Um, so we, we might just have to be quite general here and, and say, um, let's zoom in a bit and see if we can see any particular patterns. Um, so we might just say uh, map with uh, a dot for each bike theft. Um, the largest concentration of thefts is, and this one here, um, is of interest, so uh, I'm going to go back to that in a minute. Um, in fact, let's yeah, let's do a bit of customization first. So I'm going to come back to that because at the bottom here we've got uh, map labels, so we can add those. Um, now that's adding the areas. Now that's quite useful to to help our audience orientate themselves and we can customize that if we want. We can also add text annotations so we could draw attention to one particular area. Now Birmingham is where this big cluster is. Remember the West Midlands contains Wolverhampton, it contains Coventry um, and actually that's where our clusters are, they're, they're in the urban centres. So we might say the biggest, uh, largest concentration of thefts is in Birmingham in our description. We can also add tool tips. So tool tips are what appears when someone rolls over one of these spots. Um, and 
if we open that up, customize the tool tips, we can add information from our columns. So um, the location might be what we want to appear. Uh, title, we don't have a title, so let's get rid of that. Um, and instead, we can put location here, just click on it to add it. And now, when we hover over each of these points, it's now taking the information from our data in the column that says location. I'll just show you the data so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have a location column and this is the information that it's pulling. We have an LSOA name. That's not going to be very nice to read in our map. We have crime type, but that's going to be the same all the way. Um, and we have an outcome. So what happened or the latest uh, update on this crime. So the location makes sense um, and um, we, might, uh, we might add might go into the body and we might say last outcome and then we can add this last outcome category and what will happen here is it will always put the text last outcome but then after that it's going to pull some data from the table so if I hover over this now we can see it says last outcome investigation complete last outcome under investigation and so on on the big ones it's not going to do that because it's We've got six different uh, crimes here, so it can't display six different tooltips. We'd have to zoom in to get more of a detail. Uh, there is an option, however, to customize the grouped symbols tooltips. So we can customize that. But here you can see um, we've got some different options. So let's put first in press enter and put last in and see what happens now it's not very helpful is it so let's get rid of that <laughs> okay so once you're happy with all the customization that you've done click proceed and you know on the final option under visualize which is layout um, there's a couple of options here but um, not a lot to play with you're probably going to want to make it possible for people to download the data, maybe download the image, uh, maybe a link that they can embed, uh, maybe some buttons for them to share on social media, and then click proceed again. And um, at this point, we can publish it. So click on the publish button and Eventually, you will get a link to a full page version. So if I open that, you'll see what that looks like. So now we've got the full map taking up the whole page. So we can just link to that if we want. We can also take a screenshot of this and use that elsewhere. So if we wanted to zoom in to the actual area that's covered, we could take a screenshot of this. We also, back on this page, on the publish page, there's, a, there's an embed code that we can use if we're embedding this in a story. Um, and we can start to duplicate this if we wanted to make more maps in a similar style. So this would keep all the information about uh, the tooltips, for example, the colours. And, um, and that means we don't have to specify that all over again. If we wanted to make a second map that was looking at violent crime, for example, we could import a different set of data but it would still use the same base map the same color scheme and that would save us a lot of time so that's how to create a, a points map in data wrapper there are a lot of options here that you can customize you can make different choices obviously about color you can choose not to group points you can change the tool tips that appear um, but that's how you do it the key tips to remember um, pick the right base map that should be based on the scope of your data, whether it's regional, national or international. Um, sometimes you have to settle for the, for the best that you can get. Like I say, Data Wrapper has a West Midlands map, but that's actually a bigger scope than West Midlands Police or indeed if you're looking at a particular city within that area. Flourish is a lot better for this and you can look at uh, tutorials for that in a separate video. 
Um, the other thing is to spend time tweaking those settings. You know, think about color, think about shape, think about size, um, and, and do spend time on that. That's where most of the work is done. Finally, uh, write a headline rather than a label at the top and at the bottom. Make sure that you attribute the data clearly, including the time that's covered by the data. Remember this, uh, this map might appear in, in a year's time, someone might come across it. Um, so you would probably say what year this September is in, September 2022 in this case. So that's all I wanted to say about this um, in terms of making a basic uh, points map in a separate map, in a separate video, sorry, I'll look at um, some other options in terms of uh, different colors, for example, for different categories.